By 2050, there are going to be almost 10 billion of us living on this planet. And all of us will need food to survive. If we don't change anything, uh, and we will go on in the way we are now uh, consuming our food, then the next 40 years, we need to produce as much food as we did over the last 8,000 years. And that's, that's a huge challenge. Agriculture is the largest source of non-CO2 greenhouse gas emissions. And along with climate change and urbanization, the resources that we need to feed everyone, things like space and water, are becoming harder to find. That's why scientists and farmers across the world are finding new ways to help us and our planet thrive. So you're now in the central area of the Netherlands. And uh, within this area, uh, we have many different institutes and industries that are focusing on the big challenges in food. We like to study things in nature, try to learn from things in nature, and try to transfer this into solutions that can improve the quality of life of humankind. Wageningen University is known as the Silicon Valley of agriculture. Students and researchers from more than 100 countries work here in vast greenhouses and labs to determine the future of our food and how we'll grow it. The Green Revolution in the 20th century started by a guy named Borlaug, uh, and he was a plant breeder. And what I like about the story is that the guy got the Nobel Prize for peace, not for science, but for peace. And the reason was that he came up with new cultivars of wheat uh, that were able to produce more per plant uh, and in that way uh, he could offer a solution for the hunger that was uh, quite important uh, at that time in Asia and in uh, Africa. The bad thing was of course that these new cultivars uh, also needed a lot of fertilizers, a lot of pesticides and that's the reason why I think uh, we, we need a new green revolution. We need to produce more per square meter, but at the same time, we need to use less fertilizer, less energy, less water. So more with less and better is really a summary of, of our research programs. Along with the driverless tractors and agroforestry being developed here at the university's research farm, the next green revolution could rely on optimizing the most fundamental process in every plant, photosynthesis. All life depends now on photosynthesis, so it's an essential building block of life. For a long time people thought that this could not be changed anymore. They thought this is a fixed thing. It already exists for about two billion years, so a very long time. And people thought evolution would have taken care of this, and now it looks like it's not. The team created a robot filled with cameras that can image plants while they photosynthesize, using a property called chlorophyll fluorescence. By examining photosynthesis at the DNA level, they identified natural genetic variations in the way plants handle light. That data can be used to breed crops which are almost 50% better at the process. Not only could that double yields, but the optimized plants will be more efficient with resources like water and nutrients in the soil. So what the Green Revolution taught us, how we, by changing the architecture of plants, we could harvest more of the plant, and that's probably saved the humanity from a lot of trouble. Now this new step in looking at photosynthesis could mean the same. So if we can improve with only a few percentages photosynthesis, we would also be able to improve uh, plant productivity. And if we can do that in a sustainable and, and durable way for a long term and making it available to a lot of people by just increasing one trait, then it would give us a, a tremendous boost forward. On the other side of the world in China, improving food production to feed its 1.4 billion people is already an urgent problem. This small-scale peasant economy means lower production at a higher cost, 
and combined with food safety and sustainability challenges, this creates major problems for the country's agriculture industry. Dr. Li Xiaohua is the research director at San'an Sino Science, a joint venture between the Chinese Academy of Science and a local LED maker. In 2016, they built this factory made up of eight three-story buildings to grow medicinal plants and vegetables. This one building covers just under an acre of land, but provides 1.8 tons of produce every single day. From now on, we'll use plants. Because plants, we need to get rid of them. 只需要二十天就可以收获，那就意味着在一年里面，三百六十五天里面，我们一年可以收十七到十八场。Their secret: a modular planting system made up of one meter square boards, which contain lighting and storage for a nutrient solution. The boards easily slot together and can be replaced quickly if they break. 啊，这个系统它因为它一个就是说成本会大幅的降低。因为我们现在这个成本是用这个 PP 塑料做的，对吧？它是食品级的，它安全性很高。第二个呢，就是在我们这样的这个模组里面，它安装很省事。它是就像我们一个乐高玩具一样，你可以我们这个小孩玩的乐高玩具，一个普通的人就会去进行装。所以应该说，我们省工啊，便宜，对吧？这是应该是有很大的创新。There's no need for pesticides, and the cooling system recycles evaporated water back to the plants, so that some use over 18 times less than if they were grown in a field. For now, most of the vegetables are sold at local supermarkets across Fujian province, and one bag of lettuce costs 11 times more than others on the shelf. But the price is likely to get lower as the technology becomes more widespread. So, I can imagine. 未来的农业的形式，大部分都可能是在植物工厂完成，这一定是一个大的发展趋势。它一定是一个生产成本并不太高，但生产条件很稳定，它生产的品质很好，啊，不需要很多的农民，一定是这样的农民。Solving problems in food production will also mean that you you are working on solving issues that affects the whole earth. It's a combination of feeling responsible for the environment and feeling responsible for feeding the growing population.